Hi everyone, I'm Neko from Popcorn Sunday Animation. I'm working on our upcoming series plot quest, and for one of the episodes, we're going to have a retro RPG segment done in the pixel art style. So while I'm working on this, I figured I'd record my process and do sort of a tutorial slash behind the scenes thingy. So yeah, here we go. For this first segment, I thought I'd show you guys a quick and dirty way to produce pixel art, which is basically just taking a high-res image you've already created and turning it into pixel art. Pixel art was born out of a time when computers were very slow and didn't have much memory. The average size of an entire SNES game, for instance, was between 1 and 4 megabytes. To put that into perspective, this pose sheet for Ivy is 4.29 megabytes. This posed a real challenge for artists and designers working on these early games because they had to figure out how to represent things using the least data and that often translated to the least number of pixels possible while still making it look good or at least look like the thing it's supposed to be. Thus, pixel art was born. One way we can fake this look is by reverse engineering a piece of art we've already made. By dropping the resolution, we reduce the number of pixels so that once it's enlarged back up to the size we want, the pixels will be larger and it'll look like pixel art. So let's get into it. To start off, you just want to open your art in a program like Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop, drop the resolution by scaling it down, and then scale it back up to the size you need for an HD video, and it looks like crap. Why? Because of a thing called anti-aliasing. Normally, anti-aliasing is your friend. It's the thing that keeps line art from looking jagged, and the thing that keeps upscaled photos looking not too horrible. Aliasing is the term for the jagged, pixelated look that occurs when low-resolution images are enlarged. In most cases, we don't want this, so anti-aliasing is used to blur and smooth out the pixels so they don't look quite as noticeable. But in pixel art, the pixel's the whole point, right? We don't want to blur it out, we want to see it. So we need to turn off anti-aliasing. I'm going to show you how to do this in both Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. Let's start by going back to the original file. Now go to Edit, Preferences, General, and change the image interpolation to nearest neighbor. Now instead of using the transform tool, I like to use the image size dialog box because I feel like it gives me better control over exactly how many pixels my image is getting reduced down to. So under image size, you're going to want to find the image interpolation dropdown and again select nearest neighbor hard edges. Then you can drop down the resolution. With my resolution drop down, I can now just control A to select everything, control C to copy it, and then I will make my final canvas. Now I'll just control V to paste it in. And then I will use the transform tool to scale it up. When I select the transform tool, I want to look for another drop down for image interpolation and change this one also to uh, preserve hard edges or nearest neighbor. Then I can just scale it back up and ta-da, pixel art. So admittedly, this is not pixel perfect. There are still a little bit of odd areas here and there. Um, but if you just need to do something really quick on the fly to get a graphic in there, this will totally work. So this time we're going to use the uh, transform tool from the start because um, it's just always worked well for me in a clip. So you can find it in the menu or I like to hit control T just because it's faster. Now look for the tool properties panel. This will show you all the ways you can adjust how the transform tool handles images. So we're looking for whatever clip calls an image interpolation, which is actually called how to correct. And we'll switch that to hard outline. Now we can hold shift to maintain the proportions, scale it down and hit enter, then control T again, hold shift, scale it up the way we want it to, and enter, and done. Pixel art. So as you can see, for 
a single image and for certain applications, this trick can be a real time saver. But time is actually why you wouldn't want to do an entire production this way. I mean, why spend all that effort making a beautiful high res image only to throw away 50 to 75% of your hard work? That's crazy. It's usually better to just plan ahead and design your pixel art to be pixel art from the very start. So that's why in the next video, I'll get into how to make actual legit pixel art. See you then.